Uh, Lynn Kimmel is the next speaker. She very bravely is uh, doing her second talk of the day. Uh, those of you who heard the first talk, don't rush out because she says conceptually this talk is very different. So the last talk of the session. And then uh, we'll have an open discussion for all the speakers. I know there's a question for you, um, Lorraine. There'll probably be some other questions. So uh, don't rush off because we've got time until the other session is complete. Hi, I'm Lynn Kimmel, and I'm from Antioch University, New England, and New Hampshire, which is in the West. Don't forget your mic. You do. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Second time around today. How many people were in my, the session this morning on the evaluation part? One, two, three. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, the reason I. I uh, labeled this Chancer Opportunity is because I was working with the Gravity Zebra Trust uh, with a model of conflict transformation from the peace building field applied to conservation. And I was really looking at it from a training perspective uh, because I wanted to know the results of the training and I come from a corporate training background uh, and, and then moved into conservation. So, as I was doing this, I, I got an aha, and it was, it, it was kind of like when you're in a mathematics class and all of a sudden you get this, oh my god, I figured out that problem. And, but it wasn't a problem, it, it, was, it was just a shocking surprise. And uh, my background is both conservation biology and conflict transformation and peace building. I combined two graduate programs and, uh, to be able to do this. So I'm saying let's rethink uh, conservation conflict through this lens of systemic conflict transformation, which I had the aha. And the, this is the area that I'm going to talk about. It's one of the areas of working with the Grevy Zebra Trust in, and it's up in the northern Kenya. And these are the Grevy Zebra Trust armed rangers for, uh, called the ambassadors. They're the only armed rangers that we have on the team, and it's because we have violent conflict, which is inter-ethnic conflict with AK-47s. And that was the reason that I uh, ended up there, because of the two fields that I'm uh, knowledgeable in. So there was a challenge for conservation. Uh, we had quite a strong team. And, but they were dealing with a lot of different conflicts. And the Grevies in, oh sorry. Uh, the Grevies is facing, uh, they're endangered, one of the high, most highly endangered species in Africa. And there's 2,200 of them left on a recent count. So they were dealing with a lot of threats and conflicts. And they decided to embrace this concept of conflict transformation, which I'll explain to you in a second, is different than conflict resolution. And you'll see shortly why it's uh, more systemic. So this is my definition of uh, conflict transformation applied from the peace building field to conservation. Bridging social divides through understanding and trust. And we talk a lot about trust when we're in the Human Dimensions uh, Conference to build and strengthen relationships, and that's key because conflict transformation is about uh, building relationships and strengthening relationships. It's the, it's the backbone of conflict transformation that enable new opportunities for change and collaborative options for more sustainable conservation outcomes. So it's called a constructive conflict approach. Um, how many people in here think conflict is bad? A one. <laughs> now that's really surprising because, and this happened in the training, uh, I think that was yesterday, right? Um, where very few people thought it was bad. And most of the question when I ask it, it's is that people think it's horrible, nobody wants to be in conflict, it's because they don't know how to address it. We get, you know, we might run away from conflict. Some people say they just, they just don't deal with it, right? Uh, because, because it's scary. So 
if you think about the concept of escalation, which is the tip up here, this is a normal process. Conflict is normal in life, up and down. And if we, that was right, we have our peak moments. And through an agreement, resolution, let's say, the, the conflict calms down, and we see that you come down the, the curve here. But if you think you make an agreement about something, I mean, I always bring up Palestine and Israel, because we're all very aware of that conflict. There's been multiple agreements over many years, but the trouble always starts again, because there's always deep-rooted issues that rear their ugly heads, if you even think of a fight that you might have had with your sister or brother over a holiday time, and then all of a sudden some discussion comes up over a family dinner, it's going to come up again. And you might end up walking away from the table. So what uh, conflict transformation proposes, and what I propose, is if we apply this process, we will smooth out the conflict. We'll have less conflicts, we'll be more proactive. And it's really at a ground level. Uh, a lot of peace building is from a grassroots perspective, so all the way up to the top of the organizations. But you gotta start somewhere. And what Grevy Zebra Trust did is they started on the ground by training on field uh, application of conflict transformation concepts and skills. And over time, if you smooth out this curve, you can address the conflicts more readily and more proactively. So this is a quick chart from uh, the, what I call the grandfather of conflict transformation and peace building, and John Paul Lederach. And this is how he describes the differences between conflict resolution and conflict transformation. The key question of resolution is you want to end something. So you, do, you have an agreement. Uh, in the situation I'm working in, they came up with an agreement in Nairobi. Uh, if there's, it's all around livestock breeding, which has been traditional, but now has ended up with AK-47s. And you get 100 sheep if, I, if you steal 10, 10 cows, and vice versa. So did that stop to the livestock breeding? No. It, it's much deeper than that. So. Uh, we're trying to build something going forward that's creative that'll bring people together. It's also content-centered, so we're talking about livestock in this case. In conflict transformation, as I mentioned, is relationship-centered. You're looking at the problem. You're looking at the current issue in resolution. You're looking forward for constructive change processes in transformation. Again, immediacy, versus a problem as an opportunity. And think of opportunity to conflict transformation. Short, and one thing that we have to have patience with is that it's going to be a long-term project. And I know, for example, with Lori's work, she, it's been very long-term. I heard Lori speak in Colorado, and I said, wow, I was thinking about systemic conflict transformation, because I'm sure there's organizations like Lori's that has the elements of systemic conflict transformation, but we're not aware of them. And if we were more aware of them, then maybe we would have better results. Uh, the, we look to de-escalate the problems with resolution. Where it's, it's like ecology, it, it, and that's where really everything is based from. And it's, it's a give and a take and ebb and a flow. And it's going forward again with constructive change. So here's the area that I've been working in amongst others, uh, which is up here in the Albarta region. And uh, it's northern Kenya, and as I described, it's, you know, the Grevies are not in a good situation, although the population is stable. I won't go into too much detail on this. But this particular area is facing this long-term uh, conflict that, that's never ended. So the core challenge for them was natural resource and conservation conflict, but also long-term violent conflict. I mean, family members were getting killed. And we have 100 Grevy's zebra in the middle of uh, this area that are impacted by the, and critical to the whole population. So the goal, whoops, sorry. 
see this further along in the systemic part, is that uh, how can we bring both the grevies back and other wildlife and have the pastoralists come into this area? This area that I took a picture of, there's absolutely no livestock, there's absolutely no wildlife. I saw a tumbleweed and I was hoping it was a baboon. No such luck. And I sat up there with a chief, and, and even the guys in, with Grammys wouldn't get up and sit up there on the cliff with us because there's a lot of uh, fighting between the two different communities. And this is the most fertile region in the area, which is absolutely devastating. So the goal was with uh, the San Bruno County government, it was a cooperative effort, to try and see if we could build peace and at the same time, bring uh, uh, safety to the, and security to the grevies. Nope. So, anyway, let's keep going. Like, get, I, I don't know, what am I doing? That doesn't matter what Up or down, unless it's higher. So. Left or right? Go left. Right. Right. So right. Oh, right, that's what I thought I was doing. Okay, we're disappearing now. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Too many clips. I'm so sorry. Uh, so, okay, systemic conflict transformation is these key elements, and this is where I had this aha. Uh -huh. So, create creativity in imagining sustainable solutions. And I have to tell you that I think Grevy's and Trust is one of the most innovative. I actually come from Silicon Valley, so I love innovation. And uh, to, to be able to embrace this idea, and they fully embraced it, I, I want to say. We all had gone to uh, a course sponsored by the Human Wildlife Conflict Collaboration and at different times, two directors of the Grevy Seaver Trust and myself. And when I uh, was doing my master's work in both areas, I proposed uh, to Francine Madden from the Human Wildlife Conflict Collaboration that maybe someone would be interested in working with me, because I was so enamored with this. And I was lucky enough to, they had, the, they had a problem in both areas, so I, I, I landed there. Uh, and it ended up going on for several years. So engagement with key, key stakeholders, which they did with the San Bruno County government to try and get some uh, collaboration there and partnerships. And then they actually did do, uh, they had me do a conflict analysis of the area that was both from a, a peace standpoint and from a, a wildlife standpoint and um, environment. And then we did some systemic planning of interventions, one of which I'll tell you about in a little bit. And we did, we mobilized agents of uh, peaceful change, which we, in our training, we were able to create a team of co uh, conservationists from both communities. They were not knowledgeable in conservation before, but they've become uh, terribly knowledgeable in conservation, and now they have, know how to uh, approach conflict. So, the creativity in imagining sustainable solutions was the conservation conflict transformation itself, embracing that, partnerships, and uh, this newly established Elbarta Conservancy as well. We engaged with local stakeholders and uh, identified conservation threats. Uh, there is a community conservancy up there and identified peace building issues. Uh, this is myself, I should say. Uh, we did an Elbarta conflict study and we uh, took a look at opportunities going forward. At this time, we had not identified exactly what the interventions were going to be, uh, but who we could work with to try and put some interventions in place. And then we trained up these, mo uh, these agents of uh, uh, peaceful change, and that was the Great Lazy Trust Ambassadors, the El Barta Conservation Council, this newly formed council, and the G GZT management team. It was all capacity building. 
So here's an example of a conflict analysis if you haven't seen one before. Uh, this is myself out in uh, one of the communities um, talking to the chiefs. And uh, this is uh, Chief John that I was sitting with when I was telling you we were looking at that area that was completely depleted. If you haven't seen a conflict uh, analysis of a map, this is uh, identifying all the parties. When I did, I, I think, 35 interviews, and I did the snowballing technique, which kept me going for opportunistic information. And uh, you see the broken lines are areas that are weak relationships, or either there's no relationship at all, and those are the areas that you find that you need to work on. And even in the training that we did for the ambassadors and the GZT management team, they learned how to map. They can do, and the Albarta Conservation Council, they're non-literate. They can map uh, in the soil on the ground. So, and they're all employing this. Uh, this was the capacity building and evaluation model I used. Uh, this is what I talked about this morning. Uh, but basically, the concepts we covered were conflict transformation theory and uh, skill building uh, with role plays. Everything was customized to the Grevy Zebra Trust and the conflicts that they were facing in the field. And I overlaid it with an experiential uh, model of learning from learning and development, which is my background also, uh, with specific conflict scenarios and for field level application. Uh, the talk this morning talked about the results we've gotten from that training, which has been really, really successful. This is, was the plan based on the capacity building effort we did that we want to roll out to uh, the rest of the area so that we're going outside of our box. Um, one of the things I encouraged in the training yesterday was that you think beyond just NGOs that are in our same space because what I found with, when I started to talk to the Catholic Church in Alberta, other organizations, uh, and that I found out a lot about what they were facing there. And they all had opinions on wildlife as well. So we were in elections last year, so of course this didn't happen, and uh, this has been going on since uh, 2014 was when I first went over. So it's an honor, as I said, conflict transformation takes a long time. And the only way to get the training out is through a training trainer. Because, uh, and so all the Grevy Secret Trust Management team is, uh, they got a workbook and they can go out in the field and train the warriors and the scouts uh, and, and bring them up to speed because there's no way one person can uh, do all of this. So this was my aha. Uh, when I was going through all this and trying to get all this data together, and I just, when I, I, it was just amazing. And so they, this is actually from the Bergdorf Foundation, uh, which has done a lot of uh, training and work just in systemic conflict transformation. Uh, and, and it was just, I, they've got all these elements here. So, just again, some of the, Examples. And, and I want to say this analysis and conflict monitoring also goes with the training, and that is so critical. Um, that we're, they're in team meetings, when they're in team meetings, they constantly follow up on whatever conflicts happened in the field and how they've addressed it, if they've been using the skills. So I also discovered that was good, this was really a social. Uh, learning network and um, another kind of ecosystem and, and it, it, this was my first aha from the from the research I did and, and the second one was really the systemic so this is the Alberta Conservation Council and I really think it promotes innovative conservation thinking it can be scaled at, to all different levels as I said you can use it on the ground, the skill-based part. But I'd like to see us really embrace this, this concept more. Yeah, I mean, there are several applications, I think, out there. We haven't really gotten together. Um, 
about how everybody's using it, but uh, it, it's pretty amazing. I'm, I'm passionate about it. So I thank you, uh, and the work continues. We just had a big peace festival. I, have, I just got the report. I haven't opened it up yet, but there was a big peace festival up there, which it's tw you know 2017, so it's, it's three years. So it'll keep going. And we've had good results. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you.